Okay, let's review this um, game and see what went on. So we pushed through the center, looking to manage the area here with the pawn, nice and simple. I'm gonna break it down nice and steady. I'm in no rush. I'm just uh, looking to analyze my games and see if we can improve. So the knight comes down. So we bring our knight across managing key squares here at the minute and they develop their knight managing squares but also attacking the pawn as well so we bring our knight through just protecting the pawn which makes sense it's managing key squares you know like they're managing key squares as well so we're managing the key squares they push down with the pawn here as you know i'm not really a fan of this slow fianchetto thing so if we can manage to block it off in any way then I feel like we've done a half decent job of not worrying about the power of the diagonal for the bishops. If you allow it, it does actually work quite nicely and it allows the person who's doing the fianchetto in just to sit there throughout the whole of the game with their bishop powering down on the diagonal. So we try and avoid that as best possible. So we bring our bishop through looking to castle as we say king safety is key so that one really is a nice safe maneuver it's not blowing the world apart but it's you know getting ready to get king safety always remembering that just because you get castled doesn't mean that your king is truly safe because really i'm putting it to a place where it's all by itself so this is why people take that moment when they do castle they start throwing all the pieces down because they know the king is all by itself reframing the thought process of what castling is or what king safety is understanding what the king wants from the game in order for it to feel safe your castle doesn't have to look like a traditional castle but you also have to make sure that if it is traditional castling that you are aware that your king is really home alone. So the opponent pushed through the centre and we pushed through the centre. We're trying to win some sort of tempo. Ours is attacking. Theirs was more development, well, a development space for either the bishop coming out or just managing the squares. So we want to challenge that because we don't want anything locking down in the center if we can avoid it let's try and open it up if we can so they don't capture we captured theirs captured looks like they're going for the queen exchange so we take the queen off that's all pretty simple straightforward stuff and the king actually takes so the king takes because if the knight had taken then we would have taken the pawn here with our knight and we would have been nicely on this pawn here as well so the king now is not, it's not got traditional castling rights. So it doesn't mean that they've lost the game instantly because of that. But for our processes within our mantra, we say if the king has lost the castling rights, then that's like 20 points. So you get points for capturing pieces or, you know, the pieces have costed something, you know, so knights are like three point pawns are like one point or something or the other you know that type of thing so in essence the king not being able to castle that's a big thing that's a major thing because the king is no longer safe in the eyes of the world of over the board chess online chess the king isn't safe but that doesn't mean you can't make it safe but 20 pointer in my head goes right okay we have we have a better chance of getting an advantage in the game not necessarily a win but a better advantage in the game so we bring the bishop through attacking the pawn which is unprotected at the moment and the bishop comes to defend and i'm thinking okay well even if we take then at least we're doubling the pawns so that's another kind of weakness against the opponent so why not take that opportunity so we've won the 20 pointer because the king's not been able to castle we're doubling pawns in the center of the board feeling quite nice that we can actually 
get king safety, we can maneuver our bishop to attack, maybe x-raying through to the king. So we bring the bishop through, x-raying through to the king, so it's something positive, it's proactive, gives the opponent something to think about. The knight doesn't have any protection on. So the bishop comes to defend the knight, so it's kind of making them do stuff that, that they don't really want to do, which is a good thing. So we can now castle on the queen side to get a check on the king, again, making them do stuff they don't really want to do, trying to keep that um, word the initiative. So if we can keep them um, thinking about things and moving and putting threats on areas so that they have to maneuver, it's almost like we're sending them back and back and back into their little house and then they have no other areas to expand on. So if we can close those areas down as best possible, then that should give us a bit of an advantage. So the king moves. So now the knight can attack the pawn here. It's got no protection on it at the moment. It's easily defended. Obviously, the rook can come across and defend. But as we mentioned, trying to win those kind of tempe type situations, the knight could take the pawn here. You know, so that's like a free pawn in a sense. But we have the lovely position of a fork if they did do that. So the rook comes to defend. And we just push the pawn now, just basically saying, well, don't really want the knight jumping here. We're kind of covered here if the knight wants to come here. We've got like three pieces on there at the moment. Computer saying that it's gone down to minus 0 0.3. I wasn't actually looking at the gauge bar while I was doing this move. Right, so doesn't like the pawn push. It's saying there's something a little bit better than that. Bishop taking the f6. What? Initially, I'm thinking, I don't really want to invite the bishop in, but what is the bishop going to be doing? It's just going to be biting on its own pawn, isn't it? Yep. So we push the pawn up, blocking the knight. They pushed onto our knight. We brought our knight back, feeling fairly comfortable about the position. They push onto the bishop, and we may have to make a decision. What do we do? So we bring the bishop back wanting to bait the pawns down even more thinking in our heads well if we can come here we can get a two on one on this pawn here because we've got the knight excuse me got the knight attacking and if we get the bishop here then the bishop can take as well rook comes through attacking looking for an exchange so we continue with our original plan of putting some pressure onto this pawn if the rook takes then the rook can take so i wasn't too bothered about that Bishop comes to defend. So that does actually kind of spoil the um, positioning. So we push the pawn up now, looking to maybe prevent the knight from jumping into this space for whatever reason. Also giving space for the bishop to move back if they started to charge down, but that was um, way off. So the knight comes attacking the pawn. It's got no protection on it at the moment. And at this point, it's a um, case of getting a little fork on the king and the knight and the rook. So it felt quite nice that that took place. So we could take the higher piece off the board with the lesser piece. And with the opponent still playing on, it's like thinking, well, okay, it's a piece for a piece. So we're not, not winning anything just yet, just because we've got a rook. Our rooks are still flat. They're not like linked up to do anything key or important. So they start looking to put pressure onto our dark square bishop. So we decide to attack the pawn. Get this knight off of the back. Maybe this pawn can be looking to support the stopping of this knight here. Or maybe we can start pushing up towards the bishop. Try and get some sort of pawn attack going here. They decide to move their knight, and we now can look to attack the pawn. If the pawn does take, the bishop can take, and we're on their bishop. And they do take, so we take the bishop, take the pawn, and they don't go for an exchange, they go for a fancy knight maneuver, but the fanciness is looking for a fork here onto our rooks, so he wants to get his rook back. So we bring the rook here, 
just to stop the attack there. He can still attack, but we can take it off the board. And they move the king out of the way because we do have a discovery onto their king. Bishop's got a nice spot here. Could do an exchange in Ma, but um, taking the bishop off with a check on the king seems more appropriate. Knight captures. And now we're looking for the position again. We've done it once before. We were looking for the same position, attacking the king and the rook with a fork. And not this time. That's what they were basically saying. You got me the first time. I'm aware of it now. So now we're looking to put two on one there. He's got the rook protecting at the moment, but also we do have the knight swinging across here because the pawn can't take if the rook is here looking to attack this pawn. The knight jumps down and we jump in with the planned attack. And the knight comes across to defend. My eyes kept jumping to there, but his, his rook is there, so we couldn't do anything there. So we bring back now attacking the knight. And we're looking to reduce down as best possible. We still have an x-ray through to the king. It's moved off of the x-ray. Poor king. Now we've got two pieces attacking there. It's got two pieces defending. So we can't do a right lot there at the minute. So to start pushing the pawn down, we link up our pawns here. Have to wait for them to run out of essential moves and then we need to go charging in try and improve the position of our pieces maybe you know on the open files attacking pieces that aren't got any protection on so it's searching for those smallest of details so they push the pawn down we push our pawn up just sitting waiting okay so now they come through overextending attacking the pawn like we said we could come here to attack a piece that is unprotected so the waiting game um, is working at this moment in time, but we decide to bring the rook up, can still attack this pawn here and still make our way here, putting pressure on the king. So either way, we're attacking a piece that's unprotected and the pawn comes down to support the pawn and we bring our rook across to actually attack the pawn. And from an advantage of plus 8.1, We missed a lovely beautiful move which was simply taking the knight because the pawn can't take and we've been practicing those for ages recently and we're getting quite good at spotting them. Didn't spot it in the game. I mean I've got 1 minute to 52 so that's still plenty of time to have found that. But because I was um, focused on this area here with my plan was attacking these one of these pawns earlier on in the calculation I wasn't looking on this side of the board at all so I had tunnel visioned the fact that one of my rooks is coming across here to get one of these pawns at some point in the game going forward from then on and I totally zoned out all of this area because it felt like it was manageable right Excellent. This is why it's good to do reviews of your games. You can spot quite a lot of magic. Okay, so we bring the rook across now. Still feeling that we're going to be snapping up the pawns. Not bothered about the knight taking here because we feel like we've got enough power to work the um, magic against it. King comes down. So we bring the rook down now, protecting the pawn. And they start pushing. And then... Like I said, our focal point was really around this area here, which is so apparent. So we capture, capture, and their rook decides to go backwards because it's feeling like it's not in the game. So we're attacking a piece that's not got any protection on because we don't want it being able to take this pawn. So we need to say, well, sure way. Comes deep in, but there could be ramifications for that particular move gives space for attacking the king obviously computers saying that that's not the better better move rook d2 would have been better no not rook b2 king d2 i'm not a fan of that so no okay so attacking the king knight comes to block so now we can put a check on the king king goes for the rook move the rook down attacking the pawn 
looks a bit delicate for the rooks. What I'm in my head when I'm playing the game, I'm thinking, I know rooks don't have a place in the center of the ball, but I need to try and practice making them flexible in the center of the board as best possible. Yeah, we know they're not supposed to be there, but there is some type of power base if you can get them working together and target inappropriate pieces. That's what, what that's what I was thinking during the game. All the way, I'm like going, man, this is so against the mantra. So we attack again, unprotected piece, X-raying through, through to the king. Rook comes down, did think, well, yeah, either they're coming down for a check or whichever, we can have a go here or we can go here. So it looks like a bit of a delayed maneuver. They've got 56 seconds left. I'm thinking, well, we're getting our pieces together slowly but surely. So we're taking the pawn, taking another pawn, trying to make some space for maybe a pawn pushing up. Putting a check on the king, I was a bit weird, wary of putting the check on the king because I mean he could come down and start harassing our rook. Then he, if he gets further down, then we get squished ourselves. So have to be mindful of that. Rook grabs the pawn. We take because we've got two rooks now facing the king, so we shouldn't really have a problem at this stage. I was always thinking though, you know, come down, take, and as he's getting further down, they do have that. So very mindful of that, just because we've got the two rooks here powering down, we could be sending it towards putting a checkmate on ourselves. So they move down, and as we said, you know, they're making their way down. They haven't got to that key square, so they could take that off the board easily. So they take the pawn, we move the king out of the way because we're very aware of the fact of all this hard work could be not on its head quite easily from a simple bad wrong maneuver so the rooks now looking to defend and we're just putting checks on the king now trying to improve the position putting a check on the king and at this stage here it's pretty straightforward really because now the now the pawn can run up and go and get promoted and we do have another pawn here as well so that was a pretty exciting game um, few takeaways actually especially it's that tunnel vision again even though i'm feeling like yes I'm, I'm aware of most of the things on the board there's still that element of the smallest of tunnel visions the calculation it it feeds it feeds you wrong sometimes if you're tunneling yeah just because you've done that the board might look different which it did do we could have taken the knight off the board because the pawn was pinned by the rook these small details, they do help to improve the game going forward um, because we have been using that concept quite a bit now, you know, with the X-ray and through um, onto the king. If there's a pawn in front, then a piece can jump to the side of the pawn because the pawn can't take because the rook has got the X-ray through or the queen, whichever way it works out. So we've been working that quite nicely. It's just a shame we've missed it in this game. Um, we've still got the win, but... Like I've always said, it's not about the win. It's about the quality of the win. And I'm constantly having to work harder than I actually need to work. So we're trying to reduce down how hard and how much effort I'm putting into playing the game.